sure. They kind of go hand in hand, so I can just do both at the same time. The Canon EOS R7, uh, the EOS R7 along with the EOS R10, oh. which we did not talk about, I don't think. We can transition over now to the Apple event. All right, welcome everyone to the Darkroom Podcast. My name's Adam. My name is Nick. We are finally on episode 52. Yes. We're back after a little bit of a two-week hiatus. Yes, As we are. As you mentioned before, I was on a bit of a trip to Banff and Canmore in Alberta, Canada. It was amazing. Um, and unfortunately, I think we're going to be on another two-week hiatus again. Jeez. Because I'm going to Montreal for a much shorter trip this time. Mm-hmm. But... Like the week I get back, I'm getting my wisdom teeth out. Right. And I don't think I'll be able to drive over here or be able to record from home at all. I don't know. I think it would be entertaining if you like did it right as you were still like <laughs> loopy. We'll see. We'll, we'll see about that. Maybe, maybe we'll fit in an at-home episode. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. If not, it's fine. <laughs> um, <clears throat> but yeah, there's a lot to explain for me. I don't want to go too deep into it, but like, you know, I was in Banff. Woo-hoo. Maybe I'll throw up some photos. There you go. Now you get to see where I yes. was. Boom. How was your weeks while I was away? Good. I don't even remember what I did, dude. This one week is already like long enough, too long, sorry, that I like mm-hmm. get foggy on what to say yeah. uh, in these intros. But I uh, did some shoots and, uh, I don't know. I don't know what else. I went to Wonderland the other day. That was fun. It was nice. I'm just going to leave it off at that. That's good. It was good. All right. All right. Um, We have a lot to discuss. Yes, we do. Mainly the Apple event that happened this last week. Yes. I've also got a couple things that are not Apple. Oh, do you want to start with that? Sure. They kind of go hand in hand, so I can just do both at the same time. Boom. Look at that. Uh, the Canon EOS R7, which yes. we spoke about a few weeks ago, mm-hmm. we have specs now and a release date and all price, everything. Okay. Uh, the EOS R7 along with the EOS R10, Ooh. which we did not talk about. I don't think. No, I definitely remember the seven. Yeah. Not the 10 though. Yeah. So, uh, exciting stuff. Uh, we got a 32.5 megapixel, uh, resolution on the seven. Um, it's crop sensor, as we mentioned in the, uh, in the rumor video. Uh, what else? It has in body image stabilization. We like to see that, uh, it comes with the people, animal and vehicle subject detect autofocus. Um, I think they probably all will or majority of the mirrorless cameras that they're releasing from now on will unless it's like a really lower end one that they uh they might not include it in that but um that's also super nice to see um it's uh faster than the r5 and 6 being able to shoot 15 frames per second mechanically and 30 with the electronic shutter wow the r5 does 20 uh with the electronic i can't remember what the mechanical is i think it's 12 could be wrong on that one um and the mechanical shutter also outdoes the r3 wow uh which only does 12 i don't know the electronic one i think is way faster on the r3 or like it's it might be around the same because it's it was definitely a lot faster than the r5 very interesting yeah uh, something else uh, exciting that I didn't really expect to see in this uh, uncropped 4K 60p. Huh. So you can shoot slow mo in 4K on this camera. Absolutely. Um, also comes with 4K 30p oversampled from 7K. Uh, and we got 1080p 120 frames per second as well. So you can Jeez. shoot. Nice and slow mo, even yeah. slower. Unfortunately, yeah. not in 4K, but that would be a lot to ask for from mm-hmm. you know one of the lower end cameras that they're releasing in the mirrorless uh, 
lineup. Um, what else do we have? It includes C log, which is not that surprising either. I, you know, considering it has the 4K. Um, they've also claimed 60 minutes of shooting with no overheating. Okay, so that's, that's that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Um, we'll have to see if that holds up or not. I don't know. We know the R5 Ooh, yeah. can uh, definitely overheat. I don't know. I don't remember the numbers on that one. I think it's more. Unless you're shooting 8K, then you might be a little out of luck. Um, what else comes with a mic and headphone jack? Of course. Uh, 4K time lapse okay. mode. And uh, switch to flick between stills and video. I'm wondering what that looks like because on mine it's just you have to hit two buttons to switch. Like I have to hit mode and then info and it switches. Yeah. But this says just a switch to flick between, which makes it sound like you just right. pop and then it, which would be nice. I kind of like a bit that faster. Yeah. yeah. Um, and for the first time in an EOS camera, it includes a panoramic mode that can create a horizontal or vertical pano image. That's so nice. <clears throat> Like, yeah. finally. Yeah, right? Um, there were some other modes. What do we have here? A panning assist mode and raw burst mode, which can buffer 0 0.5 seconds of stills when the shutter is half pressed. Oh. So you, like, never miss a moment, basically, because right. you just... Boop. Uh -huh. um, June 23rd is the day it goes on sale. Which is uh, pretty coming soon. Coming what are we on? Like the 11th or 12th today when we're filming, I think? Something. I, I feel like that's the day I'm getting my wisdom teeth pulled. <laughs> <laughs> Fun. <laughs> Fun. Um, all that for a price of $14.99 US. Okay. US. Yeah, okay. Which, that's, I think that's pretty good. That's body only, also, uh, right. I must say. If you want it with the. RFS 18 to 150. It is 1899. <clears throat> um, which they've also those are new now, the RFS lenses, oh, which are meant for the for the crop sensor right. uh cameras. Yeah. Uh, 18 to 150 is a big range, also. Yeah. But that's man, so now this camera is basically starting to beat out my EOS R, mm. even though mine is a full frame. Yeah. It has a lot more features than, than this. Yeah. And I think currently it's still <coughs> more expensive. Damn. Yeah. So I feel like they're going to stop selling the EOS R. Yeah. Like brand new. Potentially. I mean, I guess it depends how this is doing too, but it. I'm imagining this is gonna this is gonna sell pretty well because it yeah. uh, it's got some great specs and it's a pretty good price. Yeah. And like, even if you wanted it as like a backup body, like this would be a nice backup Absolutely. body to have. Yeah. Um, and then we got the R10, which has a 24 megapixel resolution, which is also uh, nice. Nothing to complain about there. Uh, this does not have in-body image stabilization. Okay. But, I mean, again, it's the one that's even lower than the R7, so I can live with that. Um, 15 frame per second mechanical shutter as well, and the burst shooting is 23 frames per second, so... Also quicker than the R5, I believe. R5 mm -hmm. and 6. Um, also shoots 4K60. However, uh, it invokes a 64% crop. Oh my god. So uh, it's a lot tighter. <laughs> that sounds like a lot. Yeah. Um, or you can do 4K30 over sampled from 6K, which does not crop so that's nice again 4k and like these cameras is really nice to see yeah it's, it's becoming much more like a standard thing yeah yeah to just shoot 4k especially on cheaper cameras now. for sure so that's 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 nice to see exactly <clears throat> um we also have 1080p 120 frames per second that's very nice uh, like 
yeah, these these were not offered in the DSLR no. cameras. Like what? I don't know which ones had 120 frames per second, but it was definitely less than yeah. than what uh, what we have now. They're definitely pushing for that. Um, it's super small and lightweight, uh, weighing 429 grams. So not even double the Mavic Minis. Wow. Yeah. Which those are pretty tiny and pretty light. They are. So, uh, yeah, if you want one of those like smaller, lightweight mirrorless cameras, kind of like the Sony's, I think that's what this is going to be. I don't, uh, I don't know the weights on the Sony's, so I can't compare yeah. it exactly, but they're, they're definitely tinier. <laughs> um, this does not have weather sealing though. The other one did, I forgot to mention the R7 oh. does. Yeah, this doesn't. So that kind of bites. Yeah. Um, but again, it's kind of, you know, a bit on the lower end, more more of an entry level mirrorless camera for yeah. Canon. So they're not going to give everything in it. Um, has a mic jack, um, pop-up flash as well, which... I don't really need. I don't know. Yeah. Um, most people I don't think really need ever. Yeah. But, yeah. you know, it's there. So if you're uh, relatively new or something and you just like want to use that, then you have it. Um, effective subject tracking. It didn't actually say if it has animal, people, and vehicle. Right. Just so I'm not... 100% sure on that yet. I can, uh, we might have to double check during editing, but, um, effective. So, yeah, that's right. all, that's just, all I read. Basically, just saying, yeah, it works. It's there and it works. Exactly. <laughs> but what subjects were, <laughs> well, we don't really know yet. Could be anything. Exactly. <laughs> um, this is expected to be available in July. Okay. So, just after the, uh, the R7. Um, body only is nine hundred seventy nine U S dollars, which is under a thousand. Yeah, for, so for it's US. a pretty good, pretty good price, and what like five about five hundred dollars cheaper than the R seven, and still get you still get four K yeah. if you're wanting to shoot videos, still get four K, and still can do ten eight ten eighty p slow mo. Yeah, um, some nice features. This the uh, resolution's a bit bit smaller. But I mean, um, I'd imagine the people wanting to buy this camera don't care as much for that because it is a bit more on the entry level side. Yeah. Um, and then you can get it with the 18 to 150 as well for $1,349. Or if you want the RFS 18 to 45, it's $1,099. So a hundred bucks more than just the body, which again, not bad if you don't have any lenses and you're trying to get into the mirrorless space and, and Canon and then Absolutely. you get a nice kit lens with it. And uh, yeah, those are, those are about all the specs we got on those. Um, just excited to see now. Those are some good options. Oh, yeah, yeah, right? When I was out in Banff, I saw a lot of people with uh, Rebels, mm. Canon Rebels. Yep. So this, the <clears throat> R10, yeah. is looking like a good replacement yeah. for, for all those. Yeah, like it is a bit more expensive, Yeah, but you're getting more features in it. Oh, yeah, and yeah. good ones too. Exactly. I mean, the 4K exactly. and the 1080p120, again, better than the USR right. in terms of that spec. Yeah. But yeah, I mean... It's a good introduction. I want to see those RFS lenses. I want to see if Me they're too. just as good as the real RF. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. We'll have to see. See, again, we just need our hands on these. Like, Canon, come, come on. on. We can get our hands on yeah. it somehow. <laughs> I'm just going to have to buy them as backup bodies. Absolutely. I don't know if I want the R10, though. I don't know. Because if I want to shoot 4K, I don't want to... I don't want to have that crop factor. Right. <laughs> well, yeah. it's only if it's the 60 frames per second. So yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, anyway, yeah, I think uh, I think that's about all for those. Okay. Okay. 
Good stuff. Yes. We can transition over now to the Apple event. Let's do it. There's a lot to talk about, yes. by the way. I, I happened to watch it during our drive back from Jasper. Okay, yeah. Um, very interesting stuff. I don't even know what I want to start with and how far we should go. Because a lot of the features are shared, especially through iOS and iPadOS. Uh-huh. We can go through iOS first. They started off with lock screen changes. Okay. Which is great. Finally. Yeah. I, I've kind of wanted this for a long time. And a lot of other people have wanted this for a long time. So what they changed is basically, oh, of course, I'll pop up photos for you guys. Um, it's like the Apple Watch. You can change a watch face. Uh-huh. You can basically do the same thing on your lock screen now. That's cool. So you can change the font of the, the, the clock yeah. and the date. Um, now it uses AI as well. If you have a subject in, in on your wallpaper, okay, it'll separate the background and it'll put like your subject like slightly over right. the time, which is kind of that's, that's pretty nice. Yeah, that's cool. Um, and you can add widgets to, to your lock screen now. <laughs> Nice, nice. Which one of my friends really wanted that. He, you couldn't see like your alarm, right? Like it had just a little I icon, hate, right? I hate that. Because <laughs> you used to be able to like, yeah. somehow, I don't remember how you could check, but there was a way to check quickly before. Yeah. Oh, I think you would just swipe to the left and it would show it. Maybe. And now, or to the right, sorry. Uh, and yeah, now it's like you have to open it and check which yep. is so annoying yep so now you can just put your clock there and your alarm and it tells you exactly when your alarm is that's beautiful <laughs> that go. i would use <laughs> exactly yeah so that got added um it also gives you a bunch of different themes you can swipe and it'll like do ai magic and like mm-hmm. theme your photo um there's also like a certain one for just weather so they showed off like a stormy day and the weather and it was like live. Right. It's was, it was kind of cool, but yeah. like, I don't think I would have it like 24 seven. Yeah. Um, another thing that got added was you can link lock screens to different focus modes. So you can have one for like work right. and one for school right. and you can switch between them. And the best one was you can have one for sleep. Once you turn uh. on sleep, a great example, you can have just a straight up black wallpaper uh-huh. so it wouldn't blind you at night. That's nice. That's nice. So that's, that's, I'm going to use that a lot. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. Cause I know those ones when you're like tired and you, <laughs> yeah. Oh. Flashbang. yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, yeah. So that, that was absolutely the most interesting thing with Apple music. Now you can finally, again, have your, the, album art full screen which I um, really really yeah. miss that yeah um, it sends me back to like iPod touch days when I had one um, right what else like those, those are some of the major things you can now edit messages iMessages oh and unsend them yeah I saw that you could do that I didn't see that there was a that you could edit them yeah I believe the time to unsend was about 15 minutes I think I might be wrong, which that's a decent amount of time. I kind of would prefer 30 minutes. Yeah. But 15 is that's still good. Enough. Yeah. Um, what else? I see, I'm not even reading off anything. I just remember all this. <coughs> oh, God, the cool God thing like... is off photos, it now, just like it did portrait mode through AI and kind of like added the blur effect, yeah. now it can cut out whole subjects. And you can like touch and hold on the photo and I'll just cut it out. Just like Photoshop. Nice. All by itself. So far, it's done a pretty good job. I have Uh one of my friends on a beta and he sent me a couple examples. It does a decent job. Cool. Uh, Cool. And I'm sure it'll get better as time goes on. Of course. As as always. Yep. Um, I think that's about it. There's, There's other small things. Apple Pay. Um, they added a feature to Apple Pay called Apple Pay Later. I think it's available. It says on the website that it's available everywhere Apple Pay is available. Just kind of weird because it's like a credit card. Yeah. You can kind of pay in installments. Right. So I, I, I thought it would only be available in the U.S. where they have the Apple card. Uh-huh. 
but apparently that feature is already a thing with Apple Car, where you can kind of pay later. Gotcha. We'll see. We'll yeah, see about yeah. that. <laughs> all right. All right. Um, yeah, a couple other like small things. Uh-huh. Uh, you know, what are the quality of life updates? With iPadOS, same features. I pretty sure it doesn't get the lock screen though. Ah. Uh, or widgets on the lock screen. Very disappointed in that. <laughs> that I don't care as much because I don't use like I only care about the clock one really. Yeah. And I don't use my alarm on my iPad, so Yeah, yeah, same. Yeah. So yeah, that's okay. But still, guys, come on. Just add the widgets on the lock screen everywhere. Yeah, it wouldn't hurt. <laughs> Yeah. Um, I think the best feature on the iPad that came out was, I forget what it's called, Stage, something Stage. I'll pop up the the name. All right. Which is basically, you can now resize windows on the iPad. Oh. And it gives you a nice little dock on the side of all your open apps, and you can switch between them. And you can add more apps. It's like a different desktop. Yeah. Right? You can, like, on Mac, you can switch desktops, right? Right. right. You can have different windows on, on either of them or on multiple of them. Yep. It's basically that. But it's the desktops are now on the side vertically. And gotcha. you can just switch between those. And gotcha. it brings in the apps. Um, and it remembers... Sorry. It remembers exactly where they are. Uh-huh. And you can resize them and... That's you know, cool. Move them around now. Very cool. Which they're kind of testing things with the desktop. It's, uh-huh. it's, it's good, good to know. Yeah. Um, and also, the iPad now, if you plug in a different display, it treats it like a different display. What would normally happen is it would just mirror the screen and the exact ratio. So at four by three, I believe, okay. right? So if you have a widescreen, right. as right. everyone does, everyone has a widescreen yeah. display now, 4x3 is not normal right. anymore. So it would look weird. You would just have black bars yeah, on the yeah, side. Yeah. Now, you actually get the widescreen. That's nice. Very nice. And it, it does the same thing. You basically plug it in, and it brings up everything in the, the stage mode. Okay. So you have yeah. like different desktops there. Awesome. Yeah. It's kind of like, do you know Samsung Dex? You know, the Samsung phone, you can plug it in to a display and it kind of brings up like a desktop version of their mobile operating right. system. Right. So it kind of, it, it's kind of working like that. Uh huh. Amazing stuff. And the Mac also gets that same feature. Okay. Cool. Yeah. That's about it. Even the Mac, they're, they're calling it Mac OS Ventura. Mm. But that was one of the main things I yeah that's exciting good stuff yeah it, we're it gonna helps. have to yeah play around with that absolutely yeah. i know you'll like to use that because you use this thing for school. like a, yeah, yeah like a laptop yeah so I, i'm very excited to see how it works with the external display um yeah that's about it for for the apple event there's a bunch of other small little tidbits that i'm missing mm. but it's nothing crazy right right yeah that's good as long as we covered the the major stuff i think absolutely yeah all right Beauty. well uh thank you guys for watching be sure to like and subscribe and most importantly flick that bell <laughs> all right tune in next week guys love you see ya